you so much, Ashutosh. Uh, okay, this is going to be a very informal kind of a uh, thing. Uh, we are doing it for the first time, collaborating with a film festival, which is great for us. Uh, so first of all, like if we call it as a red workshop, it's kind of misleading, like you said, because uh, workshop basically means knowing everything technical about the camera from A to Z, future proofing. I know it, it might sound as an understatement for a lot of people, but I can give you examples and I can prove you that future proofing is going to be a big thing. So if you go to the consumer market right now, you can see a lot of 4K television already there in consumer market, 4K, 6K also. So we like it or not, by 2020 or maybe a little more than that, you will have all the consumer televisions to be 4K and a uh, lot of our projection system, once we are uh, moving away from the lamp projection and laser projection comes into picture, which is much more cost effective. I mean, of course it is a little expensive now, but eventually when we move towards laser projections, uh, this high resolution is gonna be a very commonly used thing, like at least 4K. 4K sounds to be a sweet spot as of now. So when you're shooting, uh, when you're, when you're uh, projecting 4K, and if you have a camera which is not shooting 4K, maybe five years from now, you have this amazing content that you created. You can't upscale it. You can't upscale it to be 4K. You can definitely down res or down downscale it to be a 2K content, but having that footage with you to remaster is a huge thing. So if you are really shooting something fabulous, your personal project or something that is very, very close to you, you, I mean, I'm not, sh I'm not saying that you sh use red, but any camera that shoots higher resolution will be a big advantage for you because later on in four to five years, if you're s even if you're giving your content to Netflix or Amazon, they're not going to take anything less than 4K starting this June uh, 2017, right? So again, this is from the technical point of view, but something that happened to me when I was in doing my education program, four months I was in LA, back to back I was watching a lot of 4K content so when I came back to India and started watching HD, the way you feel about standard def right now, that's how I felt about HD. So there are, there are like, there's so many amazing content that was created during our 90s and 2070s and 80s. I'm sure the key contents are still from that era, right? I'm sure you'll believe that. But um, like, you know, if you watch the same content now, like those days when we used to watch uh, like the Doordarshan thing, like Chitrahar and all those amazing thing, you know, it used to look, wow, beautiful colors, everything looks so good. But when you just go back and watch the same content right now on YouTube or if it is available natively for you to watch, it's a standard def. And you definitely, any any layman will say, oh yeah, it's it's little lesser in image quality compared to how it used to be. You know, so it's, it's a less lesser quality image. So it is definitely a thing. Uh, don't take it as an understatement when we say future proofing. And also there are a lot of other benefits as well. Like if you're, uh, these cameras, like our DSMC two new series cameras can shoot both pro, but these are the factors you look into. And the cameras that we have right now is Helium 8K Super 35. In this segment, we have two cameras. One is Weapon Helium, which is 8K, and one is Epic W, which is again 8K. So only difference between these two cameras, Epic was one of our, uh, you know, successful camera from the past. So we just rebranded Epic to Epic W with 8K sensor, same sensor, Helium. And then we have a Weapon Helium again, which is again a 8K sensor, Super 35. The only difference is Weapon Helium is a carbon fiber body. Epic W is a magnesium alloy body. You first choose your sensor size, your frame rate, and your uh, resolution, so automatically you will be able to nail down on which camera you want to shoot with. It, it again depends on project to project. Any questions? And um, as far as the philosophy of RED is concerned, we are very modular in approach. I just told you when we started this talk show that, so we have mount for Nikon, we have mount for Canon, we have mount for Leica as well. You might not get this from the rental house, but if you have your own camera, you can put your mount that you want to use. Uh, I, I use an icon mount on, on the red. So it just works perfectly fine. And surprisingly, few of the modules are not even in India right now. 
because um, you know uh, it, it is it works a little different to be honest i mean um, it, it dops will create a demand and eventually rental house will procure it it's like that we have very less uh, handful of owner operators i know few dops from south and few dops from mumbai uh, having their own camera it's an overview but anytime you want more information hit us up uh, ashutosh is there to help you out jitu is there to help you out and if there's any technical inquiries please give me a call and we are happy to suggest the right thing for you okay let me play <laughs>
right and another important aspect of this is when you're shooting green screen or blue screen you can easily without using a light meter make sure that the entire mat is in one zone is it's equally lit so if the if the light is not equal in the entire corner of the uh, of the mat uh, you know blue blue screen or green screen in that case they they will be in different zone as long as you are like in a closer zone like 9 and 10 if your entire mat is lit in 9 and 10 zone you are in a safe zone you know it's easy for you to key it out but in case if it is like one uh, one part of your mat is in 7th zone another one is on 13th zone then definitely you haven't uniformly lit your um, mat so it's a it's a quick fix i mean and also it helps you when you are uh, shooting in a in a very quick turnaround situation you want to keep a separation of two stops between your subject and your background you can use this to measure the difference it is not as accurate as half a stop or 0.4 stop or quarter stop it is like closer to one stop y accuracy you will get it's it's just it's just a reference point like if you are if you are uh, i would still suggest if you are like very very picky about it use your light meter and design your light but in case if you're in a quick situation of run and gun and you feel like you need to give a one stop or one and a half stop of separation between your subject and your background you can use this tool and make sure that the the separation is maintained it's a, it's a quick thing you know which um, like i said you know there are a lot of things in the camera which yeah yeah there's 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 a zebra as well there's a zebra as well so but then it depends you know uh, again zebra is a ire value so i wouldn't recommend you using zebra but if you're into a broadcast industry and you're using a broadcast monitor you will fall into a situation where you have to use zebra and use the ire value to judge your high point and low point so it is there in the camera like thanks for mentioning that yeah it's it's definitely there so the strategy which is a quick bullet point to uh, you know jot down when uh, you know how to how to light your scenes so we just spoke about that a red sensor about the de-wearing pattern it's a it's a global phenomenon i don't want to talk too much about it uh it's all available online and it's uh okay so if you if you just google you know cmos sensor de-wearing you will get all this information online and it's not red specific uh apparently kodak came back uh, or did the actual research of this the the de bearing uh and yeah apparently i don't know why they didn't spec up the game for digital but so this is a reference for what 35 megapixel looks like and how much details you will get and what is 4k what is 5k what is 6k what is 8k so where we are right now to where we will be just just see the difference so we are at hd or 2k right now and you game and, and once you shoot 8k and down sample to 4k you you have so much details still there in in your image capture you saw the referencing does that make it easy for you to understand why high resolution is necessary let's move on to the next slide oh okay i was wrong like see 8 8k is like 17 times hd 17 times like the pixel count 6k was like 10 times hd so imagine the story that i just told you about watching hd and watching 4k once you get into the 4k zone and then you come back to hd you will definitely see that difference i mean i i've i've witnessed it that's why i'm telling with so much of confidence about it it's not going to happen overnight just keep watching 4k back to back go to a film festival i don't know if there is any where they only play 4k content <laughs> i don't i don't think there is any right now i'm just joking but if you if you get a chance like that just spend one month in that film festival and just keep watching keep watching and then once you come back trust me you can't appreciate hd like the way you are doing right now so that is the key reason why high resolution should be made very common now it's high time we get into that zone and a uh, lot of key players already started realizing the importance of that that is the key reason why netflix has benchmarked 4k as a minimum requirement to submit any content i know you guys are like amazing content creators but if you are planning to put your content on netflix or amazon or any web platform check the prerequisite first netflix i know for sure 
but there are a lot of other online platforms as well but it's great to have uh, and also we have we you know we are like we are global partners with youtube netflix amazon so there is um, this is what one of the net what one of the youtube uh, uh official told me that uh you know it is easy uh, for you to do a search like when you do a search the algorithm works in such a way that futuristically the high resolution content will come first and the low resolution content will be eventually like phased out so if you search something which is old and somebody has done an unplugged version of it or a new version of it you might have realized it that comes first in the search right so if you want your video to be viewed more better start putting a high resolution content out there okay so i think i am out of time uh five more minutes so that's a quick example well this is more than 30% right if you see this is more than 30% this is a 8k reframed look at look at the referencing and i personally have uh, got away with like reframing 50% on an 8k file for a 2k delivery my director didn't i mean i didn't mean to cheat my director but then my director was okay with it like that's fine like one of the shots that we could not manage to get uh like an additional shot that we we were not able to capture in that situation one of the shot that i already took which was a wide shot we cropped it to 50% for a 2k delivery and we could manage to get get through with it very easily none of the audience or none of my um friends who are in the industry could figure out that oh yeah you cropped it like 50% right so and this makes your life so easy i mean isn't it like two shots again a quick referencing for 8k to 2k so this is uh, this is a quick rec reference of all our sensors that we have to the academy uh scaling so we have super 16 that's academy uh, 35 and vista vision and all the one that's marked in red is our sensor and the green is the academy standards so 8k vista vision is something that i was talking about it's not there in india still because there's a lot of lens compatibility and other issues that comes along with it but we have 8k super 35 helium which is 8192 by 4320 so that's that's that camera right i already spoke about red coat compression so oh no no i didn't speak about red coat compression right so i will wind off with red coat compression which is very important so this is the last thing that we're going to talk about today so every raw file captured by a camera is compressed to some standards right so when you compress a digital file you can uh, see that there is a digital artifacts of blocky uh, pixels that you get in the image you might have already seen it when you heavily compress a footage or a photograph you get that kind of pixelation right so but with red when you compress it in the camera using this value the one at the corner which i showed you right so that is called as red coat compression it works very differently and we are we are having the patent of this a lot of other camera brands are asking us for this technology but uh this is only in red camera and panavision dxl camera which is again partnered with us but uh, we we are not ready to give this uh, particular technology to any brands because we've sp spent or invested a lot of money on this compression it's a very very intelligent form of compressing your footage and um, so when you're shooting something at 6 is to 1 compression and you're recording 1 terabyte of data but you're running into a situation where you have to manage your hard disk space you can shoot at 12 is to 1 compression and get away with 5 to 12 gb of data so that data becomes half when you double the compression okay so this is the key point so what should be the resolution i uh, what should be the compression i should be shooting on so based on what you're shooting it's a big budget feature film typically 5 is to 1 but i would say in india 8 is to 1 because 5 is to 1 basically is for any films that's vfx intensive so whenever you're shooting something for vfx i would suggest definitely come down on 5 is to 1 but but when you're shooting something which is purely narrative driven 10% vfx you can easily stay away uh, like from 5 is to 1 and leave it to 8 is to 1 because you can save a lot of hard disk space and save a lot of your producers money by doing that and the way it works is it replicates human eye so when you look at me you first get a sketch of me 
which your brain perceives and then you get into the details of my skin tone my uh you know the shape of my nose and all that sort of stuff and then you create an image of mine in your brain Th that's like a very quick thing so you don't realize it but the first thing whenever you look at a person is you kind of sketch that person first so same way uh, the, the red coat compression the way it works is it identifies the sharp edges things in focus and then it identifies the similar pixels so first thing I as you go up on compression it starts compressing the similar pixels first so that it can interpolate that later on in the post if required and same is the case with uh, edges it goes last with compressing the edges so anything that is in focus it doesn't hit the compression there first like 5 is to 1 you jump to 10 is to 1 you still feel that your sharper focus and your subject is still in good details. Oh.